Hey everybody, it's Rob here at eTrailer.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Roadmaster Toe Defender Protective Screening on our 2020 Jeep Cherokee. Now as you can see, we are set up here to flat tow our Jeep behind our motorhome. Now the problem comes in is as you can see, there's quite a bit of space here. As we're going down the road, our motorhome tends to kick up a lot of rocks and debris, and then it ends up coming underneath and getting sucked up to the front. I don't know about you, but I don't want any rock chips, scratches, or anything else on the front of my Jeep, especially this one because it's black, so it's gonna show a lot of different scratches and stuff on it. Well, our tow defender is gonna allow us to protect this area and keep all that debris from coming up. And whenever we're not towing, we can actually store our tow defender back here with our tow bar. That way we won't have to set something up each time. It'll be ready for us, attached directly to the tow bar. Really simple, really easy to use. And they actually provide us with these straps so we can roll everything up into a nice neat little package. The roll itself is only going to be about four inches when it's rolled up. We can go ahead and take the straps loose. There's going to be a total of four of these so we can really make sure everything's going to be nice and bundled up. We'll remove these. We can stretch out our fabric so we can really see how it's all going to work. When the strap's loose, we can just start unrolling the fabric. And once we get towards the end here, we are going to have these rods that are going to fit right into these channels. And at the end of the roll here, we're going to have these bars, and the hole's going to line up with these tabs. Just want to drop it in, rotate it so the holes line up, and line up the other side. Then it's just a matter of simply putting in the retaining pins, slide it through, make sure it goes all the way through, and that bar is not going to come out. Now I suggest having the tow defender be the last thing you hook up, because as you can see, it's going to cover our tow bar, which makes it really difficult to hook in our safety cables, braking system, and our electrical. Now with it rolled out, you can see how it's really going to help protect our Jeep. The heavy duty nylon screen is going to deflect rocks and other debris down, that way it doesn't have a chance to come up and come to the front of our Jeep. Now I do like the fact that it covers everything up and it really is going to prevent that stuff from coming up off the ground. Now some of you may be wondering, well what about turns, because if the fabric's being held tight, well, how are we going to make those turns and account for all the flexibility we need? Well Roadmaster went ahead and built in some gas struts, so every time we turn you can see these arms are really flexible and we got plenty of room to turn without having to worry about hitting anything or stretching the fabric too much. And the overall size of the net here is going to be 40 inches from the front of our Jeep to the back of our motorhome, and it's going to be 72 inches across. So it's definitely going to cover most of your tow bar front to back and also side to side. Now our tow defender installs really easy and the way it even hooks on is super simple. We're going to have this bracket here that's going to slide directly over our tow bar stinger. So we're going to have the arms and the shocks bolted to that as well as the net. And then if we follow the net over, we're gonna have these brackets that are gonna bolt directly to the tow bar on the clevis end, and that's where our support tubes are gonna go and lock into place. Now, our tow defender is gonna work with all Roadmaster Direct Connect style base plates and motor roam mounted tow bars. It's also gonna work with a few different Blue Ox tow bars and Demco tow bars. But if you happen to have the Roadmaster crossbar style base plate that uses the quick disconnect crossbar, there is a separate tow defender that's made specifically for that model of base plate. So if you're looking to protect the front of your Jeep when you're flat towing it, I think the tow defender is a really great way. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of other products out there that will protect the front of your Jeep from any kind of rocks or debris while you're flat towing it. For instance, there's the plastic shield kind. They're more vertically going in front of your Jeep and it's almost just like a big shield that goes in front of it. Now those do work really well, but I prefer this style mainly because it's a soft vinyl fabric that we can roll up and it doesn't take up as much space as those big plastic shields and we don't have to worry about finding somewhere to put them when we're not towing. But now that we've seen what our tow defender looks like and gone over some of the features, let's show you how we got it installed and how we got everything adjusted for our Jeep. To begin our installation, we want to lay out 
our toe defender mesh net nice and flat on the ground. And then we're gonna grab the collar and rods that have the gas struts on them. Now, if we look at our net here, we're gonna have a large opening in the center. That's gonna be the closest side to the motorhome. And we need to fit our gas struts and rods into these channels at the end before we attach the rods to the struts here. So we just wanna take the gas struts, they're gonna go in the lower or furthest hole, and then we wanna take the arms and put them in the upper holes. Just kinda of work it into the fabric so we get both sides in. We can always go a little bit past what we need to, and we'll get the other side in place, and then we can hook everything up. Now a quick tip to help you get the fabric onto those arms is if you actually fold the arms straight up and we take the ends and slide them down, it makes it a lot easier so we don't have to fight the center section and try to push it over, stretch the fabric. But you also wanna pay attention to how you have this bracket sitting. We want that opening on the bracket with no holes to be pointing towards the car side and the, the side with the holes in it, we want it to be pointing towards the motorhome side. So you should have your shock rod and your bar in those two separate channels. But we have an opening right here that'll expose that ball and the prop rod. And we just wanna rotate the rod until we can get it to clip onto the end of the ball. It's just gonna slide right over and lock right into place. So we'll do that with both sides and put the other one in place. Now we can grab our stinger bracket. There's gonna be a little lip and it has a jam nut on the back side. Then we're gonna have six holes. We want those six holes in the flush end to be pointing towards the car. This is gonna slide right over the stinger on our tow bar. So this is how we want it to sit. But we're gonna remove the pin and clip Pull our tow bar out. And we can just rest it right here on the ground because we don't need to go real far. We're gonna take the stinger, slide it right over the shank. And for now, I'm just gonna real loosely tighten up this bolt Kind of keep it from moving around too much on me, but we may need to adjust that so hand tight's perfectly fine for now. I'm gonna put our tow bar back into the receiver tube, line up the pinholes. And secure everything down. Now we wanna grab our mesh net as well as that bracket and you notice we're gonna have two holes in those brackets. Those two holes on these brackets on either side are gonna line up with the holes on the stinger bracket here. So for now, I'm just gonna rest it right on the stinger. And we're gonna have two three ace bolts and two lock nuts in our kit, and that's how we're gonna be securing everything down. Now to start out, just because we don't know exactly what we need, we're gonna go with the middle setting here because that's gonna be about the average height. We can always adjust it lower or higher if we need to, but we'll just take our bolt, I'm gonna pass it through the bracket, line it up with the average setting hole. So I'm just gonna loosely attach it with that 3 8 lock nut. And again, this is just temporary. We're not gonna tighten anything down until the end in case we need to make any kind of adjustments. And we'll just pass our bolt through the other side and secure it down with the nut. At this point, we wanna take our fabric and I'm just gonna kinda of push it out of the way behind the tow bar for now because we actually need to re-hook up our tow bar. We don't need to put the safety cables and everything else in place, but we wanna hook up the tow bar and have the arms fully extended. So you may need to move your motorhome a couple of feet forward or move your Jeep back a little bit, but we need the arms to be fully locked into position. 
Now that we have our tow bar hooked up, the arms are locked into position, we need to remove the nut and bolt that's actually holding the clevis or the end of the tow bar arm in place. So depending on what kind of tow bar you have and what kind of base plate and so on, the hardware may be different. Here we have a Roadmaster tow bar that's going into a Demco base plate. So our hardware is going to be half inch hardware. So we're gonna be using a 19 millimeter wrench and socket, or you can use a three quarter inch wrench and socket to loosen up the hardware. Once you have the bolt removed, you want to be careful because there is some washers and bushings that are typically inside here, so you don't want to drop them or lose them if you can. We want to grab the bracket out of our kit, looks like this. We're going to have two holes. We want to start by lining up that furthest hole from the two tabs. Now they're also going to give us new bolts in our kit, and there's going to be three different sizes. The easiest way that I've found to figure out which bolt you need is if we just take the bolt and we can kind of line up and see where the threads and everything's gonna be. Because this bolt here looks like it's gonna be just a little bit too long because the threads aren't gonna actually go and start until after it comes out of the hole. The next size bolt, that just seems a little bit too long. If we don't have to use this one, I'd prefer not to. And then the shorter bolt seems like it would be a perfect candidate because it's gonna go through but we'll see which one we need to use. Line up our bracket. We're gonna pass our bolt all the way down through. We're gonna put a flat washer in place. Then we're gonna take the nylon lock nut and loosely get it secured. Now we're gonna repeat that entire process on the other arm as well. So once you have both of these brackets in place, I wanna snug up the hardware. You don't even really need to crank on it so tight, but we want to make sure that bracket's nice and straight, not with the arm, but going straight ahead of our Jeep. And we'll use a three-quarter inch socket or a 19 millimeter wrench and socket to tighten it up. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So now we're gonna have two bars that are gonna fit into these channels on the car side of our net. Now these bars are gonna rest right in those tabs. So that's why we kind of need to leave them a little loose or loosen them up and kind of make adjustments so they can sit in nice and straight. But you'll notice that it is two separate pieces. We've got one end that'll slide into the other end of the tube. And then we just have a little push tab to lock it down. Before we get those put together, I like running them through the net to kind of see where they land and where we need to go. Now each side of the net is gonna have pieces that we can just kind of start feeding everything through. And what I like to do is just real loosely put the net over so you can kind of get an idea of where those attachment tabs are gonna be so we can skip one of these and leave it open so we can actually get access to the bar here and that bracket. So I'm gonna take one bar, and I'm gonna start right in the middle where we have this big section of mesh, and I'm gonna start feeding it through the channels, just working my way across. And again, just kinda of keep, keep in mind of where that bracket is, so you can skip one, and we can have really easy access to that hole right there. So I'm actually gonna skip this one right here, and just continue sliding that bar in place till we have it all the way down on the very end. And then we're gonna repeat that process for the other bar, but I do like leaving this one a little loose, that way the tabs there can easily connect it and run our other side bar through. So now we should have our tow defender net nice and flat laid out between our motorhome and our Jeep. Now the bars should fit right into those brackets and they actually use a retaining pin to hold everything down. But our holes actually don't line up. And it's really gonna depend on what base plate you have and the attachment points. But what we can do is, is leave the bar inside this channel. And we can get a 5 16th drill bit and we're gonna drill straight through to the other side. 
Now I suggest leaving it in the channel, that way we have a guide for our drill bit and we can make sure that we're drilling straight and we don't have a weird angle on it. You just do want to be careful of the net itself because you don't want to catch it, cut it, or cause any damage to it. But we're just going to go ahead and drill out each hole on each side. Now I don't like to leave exposed metal on any part of my vehicle, so I'm going to take a little bit of spray paint. I'm going to spray any area that the drill hit, hopefully preventing any kind of rust or corrosion. You just do want to be careful because this is pretty close to the front of your car, so you don't want to get any paint on there. But once you have it protected and the hole's drilled, you can take the retaining clip, pass it through, and lock it down. Now at the back of the stinger here, with now that everything's in place, we want to tighten up that bolt that's around the receiver tube and tighten up the jam nut. We're going to use a 9 16th wrench to tighten up that bolt, make sure it's nice and snug against the stinger, and it's not going to be moving around. We want to tighten up the nut as well. And jam nut, kind of keep everything nice and secure. We don't have to worry about anything loosening up on us. And now we can use a 9 16th wrench and socket to tighten up the 3 8 bolts that are holding our net to the bracket. Now we need to make sure that our tow defender as well as our tow bar can still store on the back of our motorhome. So we want to remove those retaining clips from the support tube here. We're going to lift them up out of that channel. And then we just want to start rolling the tow defender up towards the motor home. Roll it all the way to where it's nice and tight against those support tubes. And then in your kit, they are going to provide you with four of these clasps, kind of stretchy. So just wrap it around the fabric click it in place and it'll hold it nice and taut. Now since there's four of them, I like to put one towards the center and one towards the outside on each arm. And at this point you want to disconnect the tow bar from your Jeep and make sure we can still store it on the back of our motorhome. And as you can see, we have plenty of room to where our tow defender is not going to interfere with our tow bar. Now there actually is quite a bit of adjustment to the tow defender material. If you want it a little more taut than we had it, you can either adjust the brackets right here to where it'll bring it closer to the car, which will make it tighter, or you can slide the stinger bracket back towards the motorhome. And then if you need to elevate it to where it's not so tight against the tow bar, maybe you want it up a little bit, you can use those different holes on the bracket to either raise or lower it. But that's really just gonna be up to your preference. But I will let you know you don't want the material too tight because over time it can start stretching and potentially breaking apart at the seams. And we don't want that. So we need a little bit of slack up here for those really tight turns. But again, I'm Rob here at eTrailer.com and that'll finish up your look at the Roadmaster Toe Defender on our 2020 Jeep Cherokee.